Good evening. I'm Mark Gooding, ZL2 UFI in Upper Hutt. And I'm Debbie Morgan, ZL2DL in Upper Hutt. And I'm Stephen McNeil, ZL4HG from Christchurch. And I'm Jim Meacham, ZL2BHF in Nelson. And together we bring you the NZART official broadcast for November 2021. Good evening everyone. Presidential comment leads tonight's official broadcast. From Upper Hutt, here's our NZART president, Mark Gooding, ZL2UFI. Mark? Kia and Pamari everyone. It's just under 25 days to Christmas. I'm sure that we're all looking forward to the festive season and more freedoms for those under lockdowns have experienced. No doubt the new traffic light system will work its way through our daily lives as we look to have a better 2022 than 2020 or 2021. As announced on the NZART website, NZART Facebook page and HQ info line, changes to the editorial positions of Braken have been made. So welcome aboard to Philip Sharp, Z01 PSH, as editor, and Doug Beal, Z03 DUG, as deputy. Both Philip and Doug take up the new roles from 1 January 2022, with the January-February 2022 issue being their first. Also leaving the editorial team as assistant editor, Graham Fraser, ZL3SJ. Graham has been on the team for well over 20 years and is stepping down in preparation for a move to the North Island. Graham also supplied the magazine survey column, but has decided to give up that as well. Thank you, Graham, for your service. Like me, you can step aside and watch from the sidelines as the others take the magazine forward. I can report that the last break of the year, along with Cool Book, are at the printers as I speak and should be in letterboxes in early December. Remember, at this time of the year, postal items will take time due to increased volumes to reach you. The conference 2022 website has been updated with an initial timetable for events for those attending in Wellington next year. A link is displayed on the NZRT website with a blue banner which links off to the conference website. There will be an alternative program on both dates for those attending. Of note, the conference will start with the NZRT AGM on Saturday 11 June 2022 at 10.30am. The conference will conclude on Sunday 12 June 2022 at 3.30pm. The late start time on the Saturday and the early finish time on the Sunday will allow those wishing to do only a single night's accommodation in Wellington to do so. Book your travel now. Just as a note to everyone, the car parking building at the James Cook is not suitable for large SUVs or utes, as I have found out during a recent site visit. The initial right turn down the first ramp was about a 10-point turn. Not for the faint-hearted, I can tell you that. Other car parking on the terrace close to the hotel may be more suitable for larger vehicles. A call will soon go out for those who wish to run their AGMs on the Sunday, as well as a call for members able to run a forum on the Sunday. If you can please respond early to these calls to make the life of the organisers so much easier so they can then forecast the number of rooms required. The inquiry on the Natural and Environment Bill, the parliamentary paper, Just a reminder, this is the beginning of the Resource Management Act replacement is continuing through its processes. An online update was done on Thursday the 18th of November and it appears that the government intends to continue forward on this matter within the current term and at pace. So I expect more information to come to light over the next few months. However, keep a watch and report anything of concern so it doesn't slip us all by. Again, travel safe, watch out on the road. You have plenty of time to get where you're going. The whole idea is to arrive there. Your time, you arrive is not important. Keep safe. That's all from me, and back to you, Jim. Thank you, Mark. The president of NZART, Mark Gooding, ZL2UFI. 100 years ago last week, New Zealand's first legal broadcast of speech and music was transmitted. Professor Robert Jack at Otago University began research into radio in 1914. He made low-power test transmissions from May 1921, but the government was initially reluctant to grant him an experimental radio permit. Finally, Jack obtained the authority to make a single broadcast on the 17th of November 1921. He had to provide details of the script and program material in advance before final approval. The first transmission on 450 metres, 670 kilohertz, was received as far away as Gisborne. After the success of the first broadcast, 
Jack was awarded the first experimental radio permit by the P&T on the 5th of December in 1921. From this date, Jack and his team made broadcasts between 8 and 10 p.m. on Wednesdays and Sundays using the unofficial call sign EDN. Years later, in an interview, Lionel Slade, an early member of the Radio Society of Christchurch, commented on Professor Robert Jack's historic transmission. We knew Dr. Jack was experimenting down in the Otago University, uh, and uh, I was up at Don Steele's place in St. Albans. I don't know the street, I forget now. And we were listening in for him, and uh, we both heard Dr. Jack speaking, hello, hello, and calling, this is Dr. Jack. It was reported, and that and the Radio Society of Christchurch presented him with a walking stick with a silver band on it, saying he was the first one to ever broadcast telephony in New Zealand. The voice of Lionel Slade, an early member of the Radio Society of Christchurch. It's now time for our NZART Business Manager's monthly update. To Upper Hut we go, and it's a very good evening to Debbie Morgan, ZL2DL. Kia ora, Jim, and Pomaria, everyone. I don't have too much news this month. However, I would like to remind all those members who have yet to pay their 2022 subs and wish to take advantage of the prompt payment discount that you only have a couple of days left. This offer expires on the 30th of November this year. As I have said previously, if you are paying by credit card and sending back your remittance advice, please remember to include the three-digit number on the back of the card. While the boxes are missing on the advice slip, just pop it near your credit card details. I have received a number of inquiries regarding our AGM and conference here in Wellington next year and the issues surrounding COVID-19. All I can say is, at the moment, we are looking like we are going to be living in New Zealand that is double-vaxxed to retain any amount of freedom. So we need to think about what this is going to look like. We have already had notification from the venue for the 2022 AGM that they will require proof of double vaccination to attend. If you are vaccinated, please make sure you have a copy of your vaccine pass. If you are not, don't make travel plans yet. However, we will make provision for people to attend virtually by Zoom for the AGM only at this stage. The fact is, the association has an older demographic and inherent in that has a higher risk of COVID-19. We need to be sensible about our choices and the impact our choices have on others. That's all from me, Jim. Namahinui. Thank you, Debbie. Debbie Morgan, ZL2DL, the NZART Business Manager. The 2020 Field Day Contest, all bands, six metres and above, is to be held next weekend, Saturday the 4th and Sunday the 5th of December. Operating periods of 5pm until 11pm on the Saturday and 7am until 1pm on the Sunday, New Zealand local time. Full details and rules for the contest are on the NZART webpage nzart.org.nz forward slash activities forward slash contests. Also in the latest copy of HQ Info Line, that's number 443. And whilst talking about matters VHF and UHF, here's Trent, VK40S, with information on the VK's Ross Hull contest taking place in January. The Ross Hull contest is open to all amateurs worldwide and is a VHF and up contest with a distance-based scoring methodology. Ross Hull was an Australian amateur who moved to the USA and was appointed editor of QST shortly before his untimely death in 1938. This year there have been a couple of minor changes to the rules and they are the inclusion of CW as a separate mode, the inclusion of an overall championship category, and the inclusion of multi-operator stations. The Ross Hull could be won from anywhere, however a quick look over the past winners shows all mainland states have had a winner, as well as ZL3, but surprisingly no VK7s or VK8s. Crank up the gear and strap yourself in for a VHF DX fun during January. We hope to hear as many calls as possible. 
and that information from Trent VK4TS. Right now for an update on international amateur radio news, we join the team at the Amateur Radio News Line. In the U.S., hams are preparing the 23rd edition of Ham Radio University, which will once again be held virtually. Registration for the full day of forums begins in December. HRU is set to take place on the GoToWebinar platform on January 8th. For details, as the agenda develops, visit hamradiouniversity.org. The U.S. Virgin Islands are often on the receiving end of serious storm damage, but radio operators there are now on the receiving end of some funds and some hope. John Williams, VK4JJW, brings us that story. In 2017, the hero of the moment in the U.S. Virgin Islands was the solitary amateur radio repeater that survived two Category 5 hurricanes, allowing emergency responders limited communication between agencies and the heavily impacted islands. Hams and St. Croix had also organized a first responders net on HF, but hurricanes Irma and Maria had destroyed the region's power grid as well as antenna towers. The government had no use of its land mobile radio system either. Now the Virgin Islands has a new hero of the moment, a $27,955 grant from Amateur Radio Digital Communications to provide a more robust means for radio response during future disasters. The Virgin Islands Amateur Radio Group in St. Croix will use the funds to buy commercial-grade antennas and backup repeaters, as well as manuals, to train a new influx of amateurs for preparedness. The group's president, Fred Kleber, K9VV slash NP2X, said in a press release that the priority will be to bolster the ham radio systems and add digital communications. He called it, quote, a new chapter for new and future territory amateurs, end quote. For Amateur Radio Newsline, I'm John Williams, VK4JJW. The U.S. market could soon be seeing its first FM-capable citizens' band radios. Here's Cell MB, KB3TZD, with more on that. The FCC has given its first okay for the manufacture of an FM-capable citizens' band radio in the U.S. market. President Electronics of Naples, Florida, was given the go-ahead to introduce the model known as the President Thomas FCC to U.S. consumers. Authorization was granted on November 10th, allowing operation between 26.965 MHz and 27.405 MHz with a maximum output of 4 watts. The FCC acted after the radio was certified by Timco Engineering, a Florida company under contract to act on the agency's behalf. This past summer, the FCC approved FM as an option for citizens band users. The shortwave listening post said on its website that it was unclear how soon the radios might be in distribution. For Amateur Radio Newsline, I'm Cell MB, KB3, TZD. It's not every year that the International Amateur Radio Union's Administrative Council honors a ham with an award bearing the name of a much-admired and respected silent key. This year, however, there is a recipient and two other honorees. Jeremy Boot, G4NJH, has the details. IARU Region 1 President Don Beatty, G3BJ, the former president of the Radio Society of Great Britain, has another title to his name now, recipient of the Michael J. Owen VK3KI Award, recognising volunteer contributions that the IARU called reflective of the spirit of Michael Owen's four decades of service. The IARU also chose two recipients for its Diamond Award, another honour reflecting unwavering service. They are Gopal Madhavan, VU2GMN, stroke M0GDB, and Ken Yamamoto, JA1CJP. Gopal was selected based on his service on Region 3's Executive Committee, which he has chaired at times. Likewise, Ken has served as its Secretary and its Chairman. Mike Lowen, who had served as President of the Wireless Institute of Australia, had also been a director and the chairman of IARU Region 3 and held numerous other roles over the years, contributing to the World Administrative Radio Conference in 1970 and the World Radio Communication Conference in 2003. He became silent key in September 2012. For Amateur Radio Newsline, I'm Jeremy Boot, G4NJH. For now, with Karen Eve Murray, KD2GUT at the news desk in New York, and our news team worldwide, I'm Jim Dameron, NATMW in Charleston, West Virginia, saying 73.
And as always, we thank you for listening. Amateur Radio Newsline is copyright 2021, all rights reserved. And as always, we say thank you to Newsline for the use of their copyright material. All amateur radio activity was banned in 1939 at the outbreak of the war in Europe. On December the 8th, in 1945, amateurs were permitted to return to the air. H Night is a commemorative contest established after the return of amateurs to the air. This year, the AM H Night contest is to be held on Wednesday, December the 8th. Now, this contest is always a friendly one. The frequency used are at the upper end of the 80 metre band. And again, the special call ZL6H will be active. Full details, including the rules and scoring for each night, are on the NZART webpage www.nzart.org.nz. The AMH Night Contest on Wednesday, the 8th of December. Finally, in tonight's official broadcast lineup, it's Branch News. Here's Stephen McNeil, ZL4HG. Thanks, Jim, and good evening, everyone. We start with the Hastings Branch 13 in ZART, where the next meeting is the final for the year on Wednesday the 8th of December, starting 7.30pm. This takes the form of a social event, and that will be at Pakawai Hall on Pakawai Road in Pakawai. Hutt Valley Branch 18 in ZART have their annual Christmas Beano at the club rooms in the Philip Evans Reserve off Birch Street in Waterloo on Monday the 6th of December, starting 7.30pm. Wellington Branch 50 has a shed meeting on Sunday the 5th of December from 1 to 3pm. Also in December, on Monday the 6th at noon, is the Christmas lunch at the Patoni Club at 47 Udai Street in Patoni. You'll have to book in with the club, so look at the newsletter for details of how to do this. Now to Nelson Branch 26, where general meetings have finished for the year. The next Nelson Branch activity will be the annual barbecue and fox hunt on Rabbit Island on Sunday the 23rd of January 2022. Mark the date on your calendar now. Down south now to Christchurch Branch 05 in ZART, where the December meeting will be the annual general meeting, and that's on Wednesday the 1st of December at the club rooms, which is at 5 Idris Road in Fendleton. And finally, to South Otago Branch 35 in ZART, which will have its annual picnic on Sunday, March the 13th. Yes, I know it's a little bit early to talk about 2022 events, but it's good to mark it in the calendar. Now, this will be held at Naish Park on Charlotte Street in Belclutha, starting at 10am onwards. But I'll also remind you close to the date. And that information was from Gary ZL4GJW. Well, that's all from me. Back to you, Jim. Thank you, Stephen. Stephen McNeil, ZL4HG, reporting from Christchurch. The next official broadcast of NZART, and the last for 2021, will be made by ZL6A at 8pm on the Sunday before Christmas. That's Sunday the 19th of December. Sunday the 19th of December. This is ZL6A. Headquarters Station of the New Zealand Association of Radio Transmitters concluding the NZART official broadcast for November 2021. Good night everyone. Good night now.